Hey everyone, um, my honey season is coming to an end and I'm cleaning up everything in the honey house here. I thought I'd just make a quick video about uh, wax processing from start to finish, what it's like and what I do with my beeswax. So I'm here at my wax spinner and this is basically like an extractor for wax cappings. Take this piece off. So this inner basket actually spins around and any honey that's in these wax cappings comes off and goes through my system. Um, so the, the wax cappings that are in here now have been spun out and they're dry. So this wax is ready to be melted down and processed. <clears throat> okay, so my wax spinner, you actually have to stop the machine, let it spin out uh, for as long as you can, and then stop the machine and you have to scrape out the, um, the wax by hand. So I have a bucket here and I use this plastic drywall um, scraper and it does a pretty good job of getting all that dry wax out of there and into a bucket. So I've cleaned most of this out, um, got the wax cappings into a bucket and how much wax you actually get out of your extracted honey frames totally depends on what type of uncapper you're using. If you're uncapping by hand with a hot knife or if you're using just a scratcher. I use a, a Cowan automatic uncapper and I think it takes off the most wax. Um, so I end up basically filling this spinner and getting a full bucket load out of about 20 to 25 uh, supers. So this is my little wax melting tank. It's made by Maxent and you can see it has an immersion heater that's threaded into the bottom and it has two taps um, somewhere around the middle and the two taps are at slightly different levels. So I'll explain to you how this little unit works. Okay, so my wax melting tank looks like this. It's single walled stainless steel, not water jacketed at all. It has in the bottom a heating element. It's like this. And near the middle, it has two taps. So I'll do one out here. And it has one slightly higher, which I'll put on the other side. So this one's a little lower than this one. I fill it with water, put water right into it. Um, part way up and it looks like that and then I put in my wax on top so this will all be wax. The water heats up the wax and uh, the melting point of beeswax is about 165 Fahrenheit um, which is about 75 degrees Celsius, so definitely not boiling. I set this water temperature actually to about 185 Fahrenheit. That um, The thermostat on my unit is in Fahrenheit, but that's about 85 degrees Celsius. So the water's not boiling, but it's hot enough to melt all of this wax. And what happens is you get layers. So the water stays on the bottom. I stir it as it's melting. It takes uh, for a big load, it'll take a few hours and I'll stir it all up in there while it's melting and it'll separate out into layers. You'll end up with wax on top. You'll also end up with a layer of debris here. You'll end up with debris in the very bottom and you'll end up with some debris here. All this debris we generally just call slum gum and it's just sort of brown, nasty stuff. But in the middle will be really nice clean wax. Any honey that was remaining in that wax uh, simply melts out into the water. So this will be water plus any honey that was still in, that was still in your wax cappings. So what I do when all this melts together um, this water level may actually rise because it gets combined with honey and I'll open up this tap and out of here will come this water and it'll come down and down and down until that debris layer sits right there 
And once I get debris coming out of this tap, then I shut that tap off. And what will happen is I've got wax above that tap, which will be nice clean wax in line with that. So when the debris layer does drop down to the level of this tap, then up above that is nice clean wax, nice clean yellow wax all in the middle, and then I take the wax out of that tap there into some sort of bucket. And I'm going to fill this little pail that I've actually put a little bit of water in the bottom of. Uh, it just makes it easier to pop out the cake of wax once it's hardened. And I typically pour the wax out of the tank through some cheesecloth. It's been, it's been folded over about three times. So in the end, what you end up with is a nice little cake of wax like this. So this depends on what sort of little pail or whatever you pour it into, but you can tell it's clean, it's nice and bright and yellow, and because I put a little bit of water in the bottom of it, um, that's why you get this little swirly pattern that would have been the bottom of that pail, but it makes it really easy to pop this out of the pail when it's dry. Um, so how much wax will you get? Well. It all really depends on how you uncap your frames. So here's an example of one of my frames after it's gone through the uncapper and the extractor. And you can see that my uncapper takes the wax down um, about even with the bottom bar and the top bars. Um, so if this was drawn out really thick with honey, it actually ends up taking quite a significant amount of wax off. So if you were uncapping with a hot knife or just using the scratcher, you would probably end up taking much less wax than these automatic uncappers do. But I actually like the job that it does. Um, I think it makes really clean frames afterwards that are easy to reuse wherever. Um, it does a really good job of it, so I'm happy with that. Plus I like having some more beeswax for to process and to do whatever I want with. But over the past um, three seasons now that I've been using this particular uncapper, I am estimating that I get about one third to one half of a pound of finished beeswax out of every uh, deep super anyway. So maybe a third of a pound maximum, a quarter of a pound to a third of a pound out of the shallower medium depth supers. So once you have that brick of wax, you can do whatever you want with it. What I typically do when I make candles, for example, is I like to melt that brick of wax in like a double boiler setup. Um, if there's any small particles that did come through that cheesecloth into that brick, they'll settle out once you melt it again. And I like to use a pot that I can pour off the top with. So anything that's settled in the bottom stays down there. And when I pour the wax into my candle molds, it's good clean wax that comes out of there. So I thought I'd just share my point of view on how I melt wax. It's just something that I do um, that maybe you guys do the same way, maybe you do a little bit differently. Um, and I wanted to say I saw a bit of um, a bit of arguing back and forth in some of the comments on an old video. And uh, to be honest, that's why I'm not so active in the comments section because I really can't stand that sort of stuff. But I think some people that get negative um, in the comments either have sort of a narrow um, perspective on how things should be or they think maybe that I'm I'm preaching to them and telling them how to do things and I'll say it again I've said it before in my videos that uh, you know if you've found success in a certain aspect of beekeeping and you like the way you do things then keep doing it that way and that's all I'm doing is I'm just showing you some of my perspectives on where I have found success in beekeeping and how I think things work well for me and I'm just trying to share my point of view and if you like it if there's little bits that you can take and incorporate into your own beekeeping then that's great for both of us um, 
and if you would rather do things totally differently and you found success doing it differently then keep doing what you're doing um, so that's the way I look at things I'm just trying to share my point of view so for the rest of the fall I've still got a couple videos that I am working on um, but it'll probably be you know a week or two before I get another one out um, I hope everyone had a great Thanksgiving weekend here in Canada and I'll see you in the next video